everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. On a construction site like Giga Texas that there is coverage almost daily, it's hard to realize how much progress is made in a short period of time, and particularly over a one month period of time. And that's what I'm gonna to do today, show you several areas around Giga Texas and how they've changed over one month. This is how the southwest corner looked on the 5th of July. By the 5th of August, we can see the clearing area has been graded and equipment removed. The roof work has made a lot of progress. The tunnels have taken shape with forms and concrete on the south in, and the cooling plant has made a lot of progress as well. Here's a closer look at that southwest corner where the glass company had its equipment, its uh, workshops, and also some of the glass waiting for installation. One month later on the 5th of August, we can see how much grade work has been done and the equipment removal, the roof work that is underway, and the tunnel that is making a lot of progress on the right hand side of the screen. Moving to the south end, this is how the tunnels looked at the 5th of July. The screw type piers are installed. We can see the tips of them, some rebar, but no form work. One month later, some of the concrete has been poured, some more of the forms rebar, and the amount of progress here and transformation has been amazing in just one month. Moving to the southeast corner, this is how the cooling plant and the interior of the east side of the extension look like on the 5th of July. One month later, we see clearing on the ground on the left-hand side of the screen, interior walls and fit out of equipment inside. We see the equipment pumps and pipes on the bottom of the cooling plant are installed and the insulation and also some electronic wiring has been installed on the roof. From the ground, this is what the cooling plant looked like on the 5th of July. The large water pipes were being installed in trenching, and we see a lot of equipment on the ground. One month later, the water pipes have been installed and buried. The electrical conduit has been installed as well. We can get a good sense of the manifolds, piping, and electronic equipment on the bottom of the cooling plant. A stormwater pipe is being installed, and the glass company equipment has been moved on the upper right-hand side of the screen. Moving on to the roof, this is what it looked like on the 5th of July. Most of the insulation over the supercomputer cluster has not been installed yet, neither has much of the wiring. One month later, we can see how much of the insulation has been installed. Also, roof drains and along the right-hand side, the electronic wires that run around the parapet wall to the north to power the supercomputer cluster. Further to the east, progress with the lined pond, the river road extension, and the berm around the pond has been made. This is what it looked like on the 5th of July. One month later, we can see the perimeter fence has been installed around the pond. The berm has had a landing for equipment plus driveways for uh, vehicles and where the glass company equipment has been relocated. Across the highway, this is what the Boring Company site looked like on the 5th of July. They were already dismantling much of the operation since the tunnel itself was completed. And then one month later, we can see how much cleaner the entire site has become. And most of the work has been on the inside of the tunnel, especially with the road drivable surfaces being installed. On the 5th of July, this is how the opening for the tunnel appeared. That was basically the tunnel without any piping or equipment inside. One month later, we can see that all of the uh, utilities have been installed in the bottom of the tunnel. They actually had the roadway surfaces installed, but they removed them to do some additional prep work for the entrance way. On the north face of the main factory, three receiving doors had been added on the left-hand side of the north wall. And one month later, we can see additional doors have been added on the left, a temporary cover and additional equipment on in the inside of those receiving doors. These large equipment trays that go into those receiving doors have been set up and a large manifold system is being assembled for inside this area. On the east side of the building, this is where these new receiving doors had been added with the enclosures, and there's been a lot of work on the ground. It doesn't look like there's much progress over time. However, one month later, we can see how much of the dirt has been prepared, most of the trenching covered over, and one last area being prepared before this area will be filled with concrete. 
Further to the north, we can see the progress of installing the electrical conduit that goes from this area underneath Tessa Road into the main factory. This is what it looked like on the 5th of July. One month later, all of the conduit has been completed, the trench is filled in, and all of the preparation work to pull the wires through the conduit is now underway. If we turn around from that last location, we can see the conduit being installed in trenches underneath the power lines on the 5th of July. One month later, not only is all of the conduit installed, but we see a new structure being erected with forms, rebar, and eventually will be uh, concrete. And this will be for some large electronic equipment to service the power lines that will go through the conduit. And finally, here's a high altitude view from the northeast looking to the southwest across the battery cathode plant and die shop to the main factory. This is what it looked like on the 5th of July. One month later, this is what it appeared like as well. There is a lot of change, a lot of progress being made around the site, but it sometimes can be difficult to notice, especially with high altitude shots like this. So I hope that you enjoyed this review and comparison for one month between the 5th of July and the 5th of August here at Giga Texas. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Good morning here on the southeast side of Giga, Texas, next to the multi-level parking garage. It's a great day to fly, so a lot to look at uh, throughout the site today. Now, first thing I want to show you is the River Road extension and, of course, the gravel area where they have the materials and the workshops for the glass company. Also, as we fly over the pond at the bottom right of the screen, the shuttle buses are picking up employees that are parking in the multi-level parking garage and getting ready for work. As we fly up back towards the lined pond, we see some of the Cleanscapes crew on that grassy berm doing some landscaping and their truck is parked up on that road and that uh, kind of landing and some water still in the pond from some recent rains. Now, as I zoom in, this is a great view with lighting looking into the east side, again, where those tanks are. More of the interior walls have been installed and some more ground uh, concrete has been poured as well. And uh, we can see that diagonal beam in the uh, upper right of the screen that's going to be indicating the glass window line once that is uh, installed. It's a great view of the cooling plant and the continued assembly of equipment on the ground. Of course, the open vents on the side to allow the uh, air to go through with the uh, fans to do the cooling of the water glycol mixture. On the bottom of the screen, the clearing continues to uh, have uh, changes. They're doing some more stormwater pipe installation and uh, also doing some grade work near the windows and those generators on the left-hand side of the screen. There's a great view looking down into the six fans, not working right now, but the crews on the ground have been finishing up some of the electrical conduit that will provide the power so hopefully they'll be able to start testing those very soon. And on the ground, you can get a good view of where that trench is being filled in, and that's where the electrical conduit came through this section. As I bring the drone down lower, I wanted to give you a good view from this vantage point on the pipes, manifolds, and additional mounts that are being put into place. On the ground floor, we also see some blue moisture barrier, so we'll probably see some concrete around those large pipes uh, that stick out of the ground. And that's part of the water pipe system that uh, connects the south extension and the cooling plant. As I maneuver around the southeast corner and this uh, blue and white crane, which is lifting up porta potties to the roof, I wanted to give you a good view of this earthwork that is underway right next to the uh, perimeter grade beam and the windows. 
This gives you an idea of how high the grade's going to be right up to those windows, and that's going to continue on the south side where we see the tunnels, and we'll see that here shortly. While I continue to maneuver the drone in this area, I wanted to give you some view into the second story and the first floor. There's been a lot more wall panels installed on the bottom left and more work on the manifolds and pipe work on the ground floor as well. As I pull away, it's a great uh, uh, overall uh, look at this corner, the grade work, and how it is starting to take shape. Now, I mentioned that grade work next to the windows. As we start looking at these tunnels, we're going to see that grade work continuing above the tunnels uh, as they finish up the concrete. We also see here some of the white pipes being installed. That's part of the roof drainage system. It looks like they are trying to drain it into the cyber pond. More of the rebar being set aside for the installation in the uh, tunnels and, of course, a concrete truck with the pump truck pouring the roof now of this center tunnel. And this is a great view of what it looks like as I zoom in. You can also see the black uh, applica application along the concrete walls. That's because that's going to be subgrade and that will help uh, keep the moisture out. Of course, that grade is going to be right at the top of that concrete. As we move over towards the third tunnel, more of the formwork and rebar is underway. And also, you can see the sloped walls at the entry. This is exactly like what we saw in that middle tunnel. So it uh, really does reinforce that all three of the tunnels are going to look the same once completed. On the center ground, uh, center of the screen on the ground is some more of the geotextile membranes that'll be laid out underneath the gravel mix here in the uh, south side and in this southwest quarter as they raise the grade. We also see a lot of equipment and vehicles on that southwest corner now since some of that gravel mix has been placed. As I come up over the roof, I wanted to show you the installation of insulation in the middle part over the supercomputer cluster and also in this southwest corner where they are joining the extension roof to the original exterior walls. And once that is completed, then the roof section will be joined together into one contiguous membrane. As I maneuver over towards the west side, I'll bring the drone down. I wanted to give you a look at the cyber trucks that are exiting the factory today. Production all across the board with both Model Ys and Cybertruck seems to be at a pretty high rate today. And we're going to see more of that on the east and west sides later in the video. As I continue to maneuver towards the west side, I'm going to stop here and point out to the kind of the concrete vault that the workers are uh, installing at the bottom right. And this You can see the trench that goes under the road over to where they're trenching underneath the factory. This is where I believe the uh, uh, fiber optic cables will connect into the factory and the supercomputer cluster. Uh, we can also see some additional work with piping going through these uh, trenches on the ground floor uh, just underneath this uh, mezzanine to nowhere right now. And I'm still waiting to see where that will connect to the building. As I continue to maneuver the drone up and zoom in, this is a great view of the work that's going on on the second floor and the mezzanine above the second floor and how the amount of work and equipment, pipes, pumps, and other uh, equipment are being installed here. Also a good view out the south end glass on the second floor. As I bring the drone down, more of the equipment. Uh, it seems like a lot more, in fact. Some of the crates with the equipment as well. Some man lifts working on some of the piping underneath the uh, ceiling in this area. And more of the galvanized uh, piping and ducting for the HVAC. See a lot more of the drywall here too. So more interior walls will be installed. And I'm trying to give you a view into where the boring tunnel exit is. And it looks like there was at least some more grade work and preparation for the uh, main entrance to that tunnel uh, underway today. So I'm going to bring the drone up. We'll look across the highway and take a look at the West Support Facility and some of the changes today.
take a look at that uh, West Warehouse on Wheels and how it uh, appears very full today. I also noticed that there were a lot more of these concrete road surface liners now, uh, and these were installed into the tunnel. They're being removed right now, and I'm not exactly sure why. And once they remove them from the tunnel, they're placing them over here for safekeeping. In fact, you can see one of them being placed on this uh, kind of a stack right now as it's being removed. And we're going to see a, another uh, front end loader moving into the tunnel to remove more. Now, I'm not sure exactly why or what this indicates, uh, but it is a change and uh, what I thought was uh, happening up to this point. So something we'll continue to monitor. As I zoom in, this is a great view. Uh, more of the tunnel roadway surfaces have just been removed. They're being picked up and that blue front end loader is entering back into the tunnel to remove more of them. And as I mentioned, I'm not sure exactly what has changed, uh, but earlier I came by and took some photos and you could tell that uh, all of the liners, at least through the part of the tunnel that we can see, like uh, is visible here, have all been removed. You can do see the utility piping underneath where those liners were. So uh, I'm not sure, again, if this is just part of their normal process or if something has changed with the tunnel. So I'll continue to watch this and let you know if I hear anything more. But as I pull back, this is a great view of the uh, west side tunnel operations and how it looks today. The outbound lot is very busy with two lines of vehicles now visible, the west and the center, and some additional ones uh, near the end of line facility. As I bring the drone down lower, it's a great view of these cyber trucks. People keep asking me, do I see the wheel covers or the light bar? And I do not, at least not right now. As I maneuver back slightly to the east, I'll give you a good view of the tents and also the supercharger site and how busy it is today. Uh, it is great to see, uh, and I mentioned that it looks to me like production is at a very high clip today, certainly compared to what we have seen in the recent weeks. As I maneuver the drone over the end of line facility, give you a good view of that test track and uh, how it uh, appears today. A Cybertruck uh, undergoing some testing right now and a uh, Model Y, a good view of the north holding lot and the number of cyber trucks as well. And of course, the north end of the end of line facility, the Model Y is entering on the right bay and then the cyber trucks in the center and left bay. Again, this is a part of that final checkout before the vehicles are shipped off site. I'm going to maneuver the drone around this open field and give you a view of this north material staging yard with the two tents. And I'll bring the drone down lower so we can get a better view of some of the equipment that is in this yard. And some of it is the blue and other piping on the bottom of the screen. We also see uh, racks of a variety of different kinds of equipment. It looks like uh, crews were doing some morning calisthenics, getting ready for the workday and uh, some more equipment uh, along this part of the site. I also wanted to maneuver over towards where all of the Evapco uh, units are for the bases and fans, some of the tanks, and the plate type heat exchangers. Also some additional equipment in this fenced off section. Uh, with this equipment here, still waiting to see where it will be installed. Uh, I think uh, a couple of the tanks have already been moved inside. Most of those red and silver heat exchangers have been moved inside, uh, but still no change with the 16 fan units, at least not to this point in time. And there's some other equipment in boxes on that south corner. As I fly to the north, I'll give you a good view of more of the steel and other equipment that's stored in this fairly large material staging yard, and this extends all the way up to Tesla Road. So here's some good views of all of this uh, material, and uh, hopefully we'll figure out at some point or see where this is all being used, but it's an extensive amount of steel, as you can tell.
Now that we resume the flight on the east side of the highway, I wanted to give you a view of the activity near the Megapack site today, particularly with the electrical conduit and this formed section with rebar getting ready for concrete. And they have four sets of the conduit risers that come up into this unit. So soon we should be seeing the concrete poured. And then once the form's off, we'll get a better idea of what exactly is going to be installed here. In the concrete vaults, the conduit, uh, kind of those round hole openings are visible. And that's where the wire will come through uh, this section under the ground over towards the north end of the factory. And then also to the north underneath the power lines up to the electrical switch yard. And so as I go over the power lines, it's a great view of how that section of this area looks, the conduit that goes underneath that uh, section, and then follows up along this uh, kind of a berm and the power lines to this location where the crews are laying out and pulling through all of these electrical wires. Uh, this is a great view of how this process works. And uh, this is a fairly large cable, so it uh, weighs a lot, and it's not easy to maneuver, even though the conduit is in place. As I pull away, this gives you a great overall view of the Mega Pack on the left and that new electrical switch yard. All of the temporary offices for Tesla here in these trailers, and generally how this entire section just north of Tesla Road looks today. I'm going to continue to fly in this uh, flight path, look back towards the main building, and we'll continue up over towards the battery cathode plant and dye shop and take a look at the activity up in this area of the site today. Now, the last several videos, we've noticed that the chiller plant has been more in operation. They have those generators and the chiller units that are on the trailers augmenting the system. We've seen the oxygen tanks here with Matheson uh, stenciled on them being filled up with oxygen. And we've seen some additional work going on, including the vaporizers having frost on them. So what I'm trying to do here, given the lighting that we have at this time of day, is to see if any of the vaporizers have frost, and two of them do, just on a couple of veins on the left-hand side of the screen. Those are those kind of the rectangular, tall, tubular steel items. And that just uh, takes the cryogenic oxygen and uh, uses ambient temperatures to turn it into a gas. Of course, the four fan units are operational as well. Those are very similar to the Evapco fan units we saw on that west side. And perhaps some of those are destined for the, this part of the uh, uh, chiller plant and maybe an extension that will be installed at some point in the future. But uh, again, I'll continue to monitor those to see where they end up. It's a great view of the west side and some of the materials and uh, the Large grouping of porta potties on this part of the site. We also see these stripes on the roof of the cathode building. Those are where some repairs were recently made, but I still do not see any additional equipment being installed on that section of the roof. This is a great view of the entire east side, the cell test lab, a small steel structure on the left, and then the brown control trailer, the wade pit, the control uh, trailers on the right, and... Uh, also, just uh, the way this entire section looks, uh, some mud in this uh, area here, and hopefully one of these days we'll see this uh, paved as well. Some more of the crash-tested vehicles at the north part of the crash-testing facility. This uh, dirt area where more of the materials and trailers are being temporarily stored, and uh, some berm work that is underway next to the trailers as well. It's a great view looking back towards the main factory across the east side. And this is, again, where not only materials and trailers are stored, but also in this section with these red tanks and blue tanks. This is a refueling station for many of the vehicles that are used for construction around Giga, Texas. And we've seen several of those set up around the site and change locations over time as the construction continues to expand. Here's a good view across more of the uh, workshops and materials that are staged. Of course, the East Warehouse on Wheels, 
the uh, recycle yard that we're flying directly over, and of course the multi-level parking garage one more time over this tree belt. I wanted to bring the drone in in this location and bring it down lower just to show you some of the materials that continue to be stockpiled here. The steel corrugated pipe for the underwriter, underground water management system, the brown pipes for the cooling system in the south extension, and a few other uh, manifolds that are waiting for installation. As I mentioned, the production seems to be doing really well right now. This lot is completely full with uh, the cyber trucks. This tends to be a short-term holding location until they are ready to move over to the west side. As we approach the secondary entrance to the factory on the east side, it's a good zoom in so you get a good look at the receiving doors. Also, this area where we have the eight new receiving doors, uh, we mentioned in the intro that this area has been uh, getting a lot of work over the last several months. Uh, the part that uh, was trenched the trench was available and visible at my intro has been filled back in, so they're definitely progressing to having concrete poured there soon. A lot of castings along the east side of the building and progress on the baghouse ventilation plant. And here's a good close-in view of the work that is underway here. The filtration unit that's uh, several story talls on the south side, the kind of the ductwork and the mounts along the middle portion, some more ductwork on the ground and equipment, the tank, and it looks like some additional uh, equipment on that taller section of the galvanized structure. We do see some progress here where the forms and rebar has been placed. Next to the wall, we now see vertical columns on top of those uh, concrete beams uh, around the uh, rebar. And again, more of the form work and preparation work in front of that uh, new receiving door that was cut into the wall, the most heavily reinforced part of the slab that we see right now. Now I'll bring the drone lower in and give you a bird's eye view down at uh, what this section looks like. Also the baghouse filtration plant. From this vantage point, it gives you a good view of all the equipment that has already been installed and the current state of the assembly, most of which has been on the south side right now. Now that I've completed that uh, turnaround, we'll get closer down towards the baghouse filtration plant so you can get a good view of the mounts and the equipment that has been placed on it so far. I expect this to continue to fill out with more and more equipment. I also want to take this opportunity to bring the drone down even lower to show you the formwork rebar and preparation for this new receiving door apron. And it looks like there's some sort of reinforced uh, section being prepared in front of that door. Great view of those columns on the left and how they are being mounted and some more of the rebar and form work on this north end. The red item on the right is a screed that's used for the furnaces to maneuver some of the aluminum that's been molten, that's in molten state after being heated up. As we fly over all of the castings and rack mounts, we see more of the steel studs on the bottom right for interior walls, the new doors on the left that have been cut into the exterior wall, and then here we see for the first time three of these very large rental uh, air conditioning units on the trailers. And I'm kind of wondering, since this is very close to the two 9,000 ton gigapresses inside, when I, am, I know that there has been some... Uh, Temperature issues in there because of the operation of the gigapresses, if maybe this is not another option that they are putting into place to help cool that area. But that'll be something to follow up on and see if that uh, conjecture is true or not. And finally, we'll stop here at the 4680 battery cell portion of the factory, what it looks like today, some deliveries, and uh, otherwise, most of the work is on the inside. And of course, the cooling enclosures and ducts on top of the 4680 cell portion of the factory. So I'm going to bring the drone up, give you a great view across the highway of that West Support facility, the material staging yards that we visited, of course, the main factory itself, 
and a great view across the east side of that parking lot, the multi-level parking garage, and where we saw all of those cyber trucks. And on the bottom of the screen where all of that conduit is being installed to connect the electrical switch yard to the main factory. So that'll bring to a close the video for today. I hope you enjoyed what we were able to talk about in the intro and the video. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.